it has come to my attention that some of you guys don't think you have the Holy Spirit and you question whether you have the Holy Spirit or not. And I want to share a scripture verse with you guys. And this is the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 26 to 40. I won't read the whole thing, but I'll give you the context. What happened here is that there was a eunuch, an Ethiopian eunuch, and he was leaving Jerusalem having worshipped, okay? And he was returning back to Ethiopia, and he was sitting in his chariot. And so Philip, instructed by the Holy Spirit, instructed by the Holy Spirit, um, the Spirit of God told him, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? So the Ethiopian eunuch is trying to understand the gospel, but has not gotten the gospel yet. And he says, How can I understand unless somebody guides me? And he invited Philip to come with him and sit with him. Now, Philip explained to him the passage of the scripture in Isaiah that talked about Jesus being led to be to the slaughter. Okay. And verse 34 says this. And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom does a prophet say this? And Philip tells him it is about Jesus who came on this earth in the flesh, died and resurrected on the third day. Right. I'm giving my own paraphrase version. And as they're going on this journey, the eunuch says, see, here's water. What prevents me from being baptized? Would you please baptize me? He commands the chariots to stop. Philip goes to the water, the body of water, baptizes him, right? And they come up of the water and the spirit of God takes Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing because the eunuch had received the gospel with an open mind, with an open heart, became baptized. He went away rejoicing. How do I know that the eunuch received the Holy Spirit, received the counselor, received the guide? How? He went away rejoicing the joy of the Lord, right? That joy (laughs) <laughs> that joy, the joy of our salvation is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Holy Spirit is the one that gives you joy because he guides you. He counsels you. The Bible says, in the night, my heart counsels me. That is the Holy Spirit in your heart, counseling you, giving you advice, giving you, um, you kind of meditate some of you, I hope you do, you sit there or you lay there and you think about the day and what happened during the day. And as you contemplate on the day's happenings, you get counsel from the Holy Spirit, how you could navigate that better or how you could have avoided that situation or the other. So Holy Spirit is a spirit of joy. When you do the exact opposite of what it's asking you to do, that is when you feel the grieving, you lose the joy because you're doing the exact opposite of what the Spirit of God is telling you to do. Okay, now I'm going to add another question. I'm going to ask another question here. Some of you guys are asking, oh, I asked the Holy Spirit for help and he doesn't help me. I hear nothing. Sometimes the questions asking him for require you to move by faith. For example, if I'm asking God, should I apply for a school? Should I go to do my PhD program, for example? And he says nothing. He says nothing. But I decide to move by faith and start to apply to different schools for a PhD program. Now, I always have this prayer, Lord, if it's your will, let it go through. If it is not your will, shut it down. Shut it down. All right. Now, if your mentality, your mindset is this, that God's will supersedes any other will, then with that kind of prayer or that kind of lifestyle, if it is his will for you to go to a PhD program, he won't shut it down. They're going to accept you. And they might even give you funds for it because it's his will for you to go. You might not hear an audible voice saying, yes, Primrose, go and do your PhD or no primrose don't do a phd right here we see philip he received actual words holy spirit spoke to him um clearly it was a verbal like hold on let me see um holy spirit told him go over and join this chariot go over and join this chariot 
instructions were given to him so another person could receive the gospel and the seal, the guarantee of the gospel, which is the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when you guys ask the Holy Spirit to help you, and I, I tell you guys all this, like I tell you guys this all the time, ask him to help you. But you have to move by faith and do so. Holy Spirit, help me to subdue or overcome lust. Do not open up the apps. Do not open up your computer that you have been using to indulge in lustful things. Just don't. And it, he empowers you. He is within you. He empowers you not to open it. Now, let's say you say, Holy Spirit, help me not to get angry at my child. Right? And you go have an interaction with your child. Your child says something. And as you're about to say something angrily, you, you, you feel a check in your spirit. Like, no. You, you, you feel resistance not to reply with anger. Holy Spirit is enabling you not to reply with anger. He is empowering you to have self-control. He is empowering you to have self-control. But ultimately, you decide whether you want to hear the prompt or not. Ultimately, you decide whether you want to hear the prompting of the Holy Spirit or not. Holy Spirit is not there to control you. He is there to guide you. He is there to counsel you. It is self-control. Self-control. Oh, I get angry. Holy Spirit, help me. Self-control. He will remind you in that moment, do not get angry. Or no. Or something will happen where you like, okay, maybe I shouldn't react this way. You're going to get that inner voice in you telling you, do not act crazy right now listen to that voice listen to the promptings of the holy spirit instead of emailing me or writing me and saying i asked for holy spirit's help i hear nothing no you hear it you just don't want to abide by that you want him to appear in a white gown and slap your face and say don't say that don't say that no you have to follow the voice of the spirit that is inside of you holy spirit speaks your spirit Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit. He's together with your spirit. They're one. They've come together. They're one. And as he speaks to your spirit, your mind picks that, picks it up. Your mind picks it up. And the more you listen to these promptings, the more you listen is when it, it's easier for you to decipher his voice versus your voice. The more you listen to his prompts, the more you abide and obey him in self-control, in love, in patience in joy in faithfulness in gentleness the easier it gets to hear him okay holy spirit help me give me the bonus to speak to this man about the gospel then go up to that man and start speaking the bible says in luke 12 verse 12 in that very hour do not worry what you should say in that very hour he'll give you the words to speak he'll give you the words of wisdom they'll come to you randomly things will come to you speak those words that is the holy spirit giving you imparting words of wisdom words of knowledge share that trust him and share that and believe you me, that man will be touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. His heart will become transformed. Like his heart will be pierced with the truth. And he'll want to change. He'll want to transform. Why? You spoke the words that were powered by the Holy Spirit. That were given to you by the Holy Spirit. Not your own mind. Not your own intellect. No, you spoke the words that the Holy Spirit gave you according to what? Luke 12 verse 12. You, you start by faith. Hi, have you heard about the gospel? You start by faith. And he emboldens you. He gives you words of wisdom. Sometimes when I'm speaking, I can differentiate when he comes and starts to speak through me. I'm like, wow, that's him. 